Hey, um, real excited about what God's doing. Uh, who's worried about being sick? <laughs> and, and you came? <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyhow, hey, look, uh, things like this obviously pop up and whatnot, but we um, are just praying that God's protecting us and protecting your family, right? He is our protector. It's not just something we read about or something we sing about. It's the truth. And uh, anyhow, when we get sick, he's our healer. So uh, we win either way, you know. So uh, anyhow, just in case you're worried about those things, we're praying for you. And uh, I've already had some folks this morning that have said, hey, you know, we're sick today. Or can we move lunch or whatever? And like, yes, uh, that's all right. So once again, here at South County, we believe in hand sanitizer and Aveeno lotions out there for you too, just in case. Okay. Well, listen, the ushers are going to come this morning and receive the morning tithes and offering. Uh, thank you so much for your faith, faithfulness and giving. So many people are giving online now, and we uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but honestly, it's the Lord that blesses you. When, when we recognize that he is our source, um, it's, it makes it a whole lot easier to give. But I got to tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a look behind the scenes at times. There are still times when Andy, as I'm looking at, you know, the year and whatnot <clears throat> and adjusting tithe and all that kind of stuff, you know, as you kind of do at the first of, of the year, uh, where, you know, there's this, this temptation at times, to, ah, is that really that necessary? Honestly, we're, we're you know, I'm just being human with you, right? And, and so I'll have this moment or whatever where I'm like, where I get this thought in my head, like, maybe, maybe don't worry about that adjusting it this year. So where do y'all think that comes from? How about sinful nature? Sinful nature and how about could it be Satan? Right? I mean seriously. Seriously. And so I'm saying that the enemy wants to tempt you not to give and not to do what God asks of us. And I, I'm just telling you we lose uh, when we do that. And so uh, yes, I resist temptation just like I want you to do. And we're saying, God, we're putting you first. You're our source. So <clears throat> anyhow, you probably didn't expect to hear that from your pastor this morning. But it's true. You know, we, we all are living this life and temptations come. And the greatest way to counter greed in our lives, honestly, is to give. And, uh, and that's what um, we all have the opportunity to do all the time. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for just blessing us. And God, we know as we continue to walk in obedience, God, you're going to continue uh, to bless us because that's what you do. And so Lord, we declare that you are our source. We declare uh, that your word is true and that Lord, when we give this 10%, uh, God, you take care of so many things in our lives. So thank you for what you're going to do. And um, we're looking forward to the future at South County. And if you believe it this morning, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Our ushers are going to begin receiving this morning. Uh, just a couple things. I know John already hinted about the men's breakfast uh, coming up. And it seems like we just had one, but this is actually just kind of how it worked out this month in February. So February 8th is, is uh, when we're having that, 7 o'clock at the office. And uh, our own Jesse Wilson, I say our own, um, now that he's retired from the Navy, uh, he's still trying to figure out what he wants to be when he grows up after like 36 or 37 years in the, in the Navy. But he's going to be speaking to us uh, for this breakfast. It's actually, so this month he actually gets to have a birthday. Cassidy reminded me this morning, his birthday is on leap year. And so he actually gets to have a birthday. So anyhow, but Jesse Wilson, it's going to be a great time uh, for that breakfast. And uh, the last thing is moving to more. So there's a couple more quotes for moving to more. I uh, hope you've been blessed by this, this one from chapter 9, never pass up an opportunity to bless someone else because when you do, you'll miss out on the blessing you would have received in the place of the blessing you gave, okay? And then chapter 10, when you become a Christian, you give up your right to be offended. I believe one of the greatest deterrents to spiritual growth is offense. The way I keep myself from being offended is to remember Jesus on the cross. There, with his body nailed to the to two beams of wood, Jesus didn't say, how could they do this to me after everything I've done for them? Instead, the first thing out of his mouth was, Father, forgive them. He refused to be offended, so I refuse to be offended. Is that good? 
Come on, that's so good. I give up the right to be offended. Who gives up the right to be offended? <laughs> like, like, let me think about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> let, me, let me think about that real quick. Let me go. Let me pray about that. Anyhow, honestly, it is something amazing when we are able to not uh, be offended. We can choose, and I know that that's hard, but God gives us the grace uh, to do that. Isn't that right? He gives us the grace to do things that we couldn't do in the natural. It's a supernatural thing, following after the Lord. So who's enjoyed our series here, uh, Dream On? We've, we've had a good time. I didn't give you a chance to respond. Who's enjoyed the series you're like, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's been good. Okay, so today uh, we're going to talk about staying the course, all right? Staying the course. We're still learning from Abraham. So many lessons. I love the Old Testament, and uh, it, it just speaks so much to us because we can look at someone's life over the entire, you know, experience of following God, and that's what we see uh, this morning. Uh, last week, we talked about the dream process. Did you see where you were in the dream process? Were you, were you watching? Were you taking notes? Man, you all, pancakes, I tell you, what's up? <clears throat> so we learned last week the dream process. We learned stage one is what? <laughs> the vision from God, right? The vision from God. Stage two is preparation. Stage three is what? You remember this one, I know you do. Wilderness and struggle, right? Wilderness and struggle. And then stage four, the realization of the vision. I mean, this is the sweet spot. This is, we actually get to see something happen, right? And we celebrate that. And the great thing about following the Lord is it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. There's stage five, which is new beginnings and more vision. So, uh, there's always more with our Lord. Isn't that great? There's always more. So we, gotta, we have to keep our eyes on the dream giver, right? Not our circumstances. If we keep our eyes on the circumstances or failed relationships or all these, all these things that are happening in our life, if we continue to focus on negative things, then what's going to happen? Right? So when Peter, Jesus is like, yeah, sure, come, walk on the water, what happened? So Peter all of a sudden starts focusing because he's thinking, oh, cool, I, uh, Jesus is calling me. And he gets out and starts walking on the water, which we'd all be freaking out. Let's just be honest. <laughs> right? I don't care how much, how great a swimmer you are, <laughs> you know. I mean, you'd still be freaking out. So he's like stepping out, right? And once he took his eyes off Jesus and started looking at all the waves and things and the water and, hey, wait a minute, I shouldn't be walking on water he began to sink. And that's the same for us uh, as well. We have to keep our eyes on the dream giver. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord. Isn't that right? Keep our eyes on God. That is the game changer. So here we're talking about staying the course this morning. So to open this up today, when you're sitting at a stop sign and someone takes too long, what do you do? <laughs> now we got to keep a G. Okay, keep a G. All right, you're in church. But when you're at a stop sign and no one's moving, and, I, and I'm not talking about where there's traffic, you know, obviously we have patience when we need to, right? But I'm talking about you're at a stop sign and the person in front of you is not moving and it's clear, okay? Now, you could do the Christian honk. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> or you could do the I ain't feeling Christian today, y'all. You know? Right? I mean, they get about 2.3 seconds, don't they? Especially in this, and it might be one second. But they, they got a short amount of time to make a, to make a move. Like, what, what are you going to do? And then if it lasts 10 seconds, what do you do then? You're like, you're like trying to get around them, right? And then what happens if there's no way to get around them? What are you doing? You were like, oh, there will be a way. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you're going to do whatever it takes, forward, back, forward, back, to get whatever space between you and the car back here, and you're telling the person behind you, right? Because you're going to get around because ain't nobody got time for this. 
This is, is this too close for comfort? For uh, Northern Virginia, right? It is so true uh, that we don't have time. But here's the deal, and here's what we're going to step into a little bit today. What if the waiting, not necessarily your stop sign, right? But what if the waiting and staying the course is part of God's plan? What if there really is a problem? What if there's an accident on the other side about to happen? What if staying the course is really part of God's plan? What if it's building your character? What if it's actually a test? Would you pass? Would I pass? Every day, right, we have these kinds of interactions, but what if God's plan includes some delays to build character and trust to actually trust God? Now we're getting real in this place, okay? Because it's not the stop signs usually, but there are things that delay us and we start to wonder, are you serious, God? No, there's not touchdown. Are you serious? Right, God, why are we waiting this long? So here, uh, big idea this morning is this. Shortcuts can delay and disrupt God's best for you. Okay? Shortcuts can delay and disrupt God's best for you. Stay the course, South County. Stay the course. Stay the course. Stay. Right? We are all tempted to veer off course did God really say, right? We're all tempted. Stay the course. So the background here, once again, God had a call on Abraham and his family. We, we saw in Genesis chapter 12 the, the dream God had for Abraham. We're not going to read that again today, but you, you know where we are, uh, verses 1 uh, to 3. But here's the deal with dreams. Sometimes dreams take what? time. Sometimes dreams, they take, they take some time, and we don't have time to wait. But God does. Oh, God does. God has, God has the time. He created the time. He's the beginning. He sees the beginning from the end. He's the alpha and the omega, Scripture says. So he can see the beginning from the end. He can see the full picture. The things that you're struggling with right now in the present, he sees the end. He not only saw the beginning, the, the things that are frustrating you and your family right now, the things that aren't working out the way that you think they should, the kids that aren't doing exactly what you want them to do, God sees the end. And then we have this opportunity to trust him in the middle of it. Got to trust you, got to trust you, got to trust you. Well, I don't know, got to trust you. You know what I'm saying? Where you start veering off a little bit and you start wondering a little bit. Don't doubt God. Stay the course. Stay the course. God's plans unfold as we follow him. They unfold as we follow him. And so we continue our story of Abraham today. This is 10 years after the dream is given. Who's got 10 years to wait? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody in here, 10 years after the dream is given, Abraham and Sarah are getting impatient. They're getting impatient. And uh, this is even acknowledging the, the pain of not being able to have children. We know about this even before the call of Abraham in Genesis 12. Genesis eleven thirty 30 says this, 11 verse 30 says, but Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. Okay, do you think there was some frustration there? You know, we walk through situations like that with people in church and whatnot, and uh, then we celebrate the victories that are there too, Daniel and Zuma, I'm just saying. We celebrate the victories, what God does, but there's a lot of pain in the process. Remember last week, enjoy the process? And what do we want, do we ever want to hear that? Yeah, shut up, yeah. Okay, so here we are in Genesis chapter 16. Are you ready? Oh, man. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to do a good job today, y'all. Are you ready? Okay, okay, here we go. Genesis 16, starting at verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abraham, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. Uh oh. <clears throat> so Sarai, Abram's so Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened ten years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, see, look, you don't need to watch soap operas, people. Just, I'm just saying, right here, okay? Yeah, don't be watching that trash anyway, but, but I'm just saying it's, it's here, it's here. Okay, then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now she's pregnant. She treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Now she trusts God, I'm just saying. Abram replied, look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarah's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against Everyone and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Therefore, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. Say that with me. You are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Ber Lahe Roy, which means which means the one who sees me, uh, the well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Now, how old was he when God gave him the promise? 75, Scripture says, right? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you that we get to learn uh, from Scripture <laughs> Thank you that we get to learn from someone else's pain, God, so that we uh, can follow you and not experience as much pain. We love you, Lord, today, and uh, we just pray for open eyes, open ears, and hearts to receive your word. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Well, uh, more lessons from Abraham and the dream giver today. This is where we are. More lessons from Abraham and the dream, dream giver. The first one is this. Usually, usually, God's timing and our timing are off, okay? Usually, God's timing and our timing, okay, what we want, right, are off. Um, when you're praying about an issue, when do you want the answer? <laughs> I mean, is there ever, like, a time when you're praying to God going, you know, God, um, you know, if you want to do it by next Tuesday, you know, or God, how about a couple months from now, you know, um, I know I need the finances now, but God, you're sovereign. How about a couple months from now? I mean, you're, you're never praying for something like that. It's like, God, you know, this, this limp that I've been walking with, you know, if you could just heal that uh, in a few years, that would be good. None of us are praying things like that. We want things right now. We want it right now. And so Abraham had waited 10 years. And uh, they were, they were getting impatient with that, and we're going we're gonna to read through that a little bit. But sometimes we have to wait 
because we've got to recognize that God's timing is perfect. Do you understand? God's timing is, he's always right on time. He's always right on time. Now, we at times can't fully understand, like, God, why are you waiting on this? I, I see what's going on here. I can see, you know, which is kind of funny, right? That we think that we can see better than God. But don't we do that? Can, can we be honest a little bit today? I mean, don't, don't we think sometimes that we can see better than God? You know, so we're like, God, I know you want us, I know you want me to do it this way, but God, I, the blessing's right here with my decision. Anyhow, dangerous, dangerous. Uh, so sometimes we have to wait because God's timing is perfect. Isaiah 55, eight through nine says this, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. This is so good. My thoughts are sometimes like your thoughts. Is that what it says? <laughs> My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. That means we cannot even fathom, right? For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God's timing is what? Perfect. God's timing is perfect, and he determines our steps, he determines our steps. Scripture says in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Proverbs 16, 1 says, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. Psalm 18, 30, God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him for protection. So the Lord's timing is perfect and we've got to trust that he's even protecting us from ourselves, right? Oh God, I, I know, I, I know she's the right one for me, I know. We've talked about that many times where you're like, thank you God, she was not the right one. Cindy, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Right? God's timing is perfect and he's protecting us. He's protecting us from things we can't see. He's even protecting us from ourself. It's an amazing thing to ponder. Cindy and I um, have had immediate answers to prayer. Who likes those? Come on. Come on. I love it. Lord, bring it today. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, right? I mean, you want the answer right, right now. And so Cindy and I, we've had immediate answers and we've had Things we're still waiting on, honestly. You know, when we first met Timothy, he was three. He was three. And, uh, you know, Cindy and I had a piece about adopting Timothy at three. You know, he was the cutest little guy. He was running around. Oh, never mind. I was, I was about to say something, and, and I would have taken to a story that just embarrassed him for no end. So never mind, never mind. Erase, erase, erase. <laughs> okay, so... But anyhow, he was so cute is what I was trying to say without telling the story. And so we were like, Cindy and I were ready to adopt him. Then, at three. And we're, this is before we had our biological kids, you know, obviously during Cassidy. And so uh, we're like, Cindy and I had this talk. We were like, we were ready to adopt him. And it never happened. So seven years later, it wasn't 10, thank you, Jesus. Count your blessings. But it, but it was seven years later that Cindy has a dream that we're bringing Timothy home. And we're getting ready to go out to Seattle for our Desiree's graduation, Cindy's niece's graduation. And so Cindy has this dream that we're bringing Timothy home. And I'm thinking, oh, well, okay, that's, that's great. You know, what's for breakfast? You know, I, mean? you know, I really didn't think much of it. But we get out there to, to the Seattle area. We're getting ready to go up to see, to see Mount St. Helens. And, um, you know, it's always a, you know, a crapshoot uh, because of the cloud cover and everything. But we're getting ready to go up there. And my mom calls me. We're literally at the, at the base of the mountain. My mom calls me and she goes, you're not, never going to believe this. But she says, Timothy's social worker just called and, and they want to know if you're still open to adopting him. Seven years later, right? And I'm like, 
you know, turn into Cindy and I'm telling her this. And Cindy's, uh, she's, she's like, I had that dream. And this is not something that, that has happened to Cindy ever with these dreams, right? So she had this dream that we're bringing Timothy home. And she's like, I had this dream. And so literally all the way up the mountain and all the way home, you know, we're just like pondering, what does this mean? So a couple days later, say I got to finish the story because I know you're, in, I know I'm reeling you in now. So, 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 uh, a couple days later, I'm praying before I read my Bible. I'm just like, God, that is great that you gave Cindy a dream, but I need something. I signed seriously. I signed up for the three-year-old, not the ten-year-old. Okay, I mean, this is my conversation with God. It was pretty much one way, but it's my my conversation with the Lord. And would you, would you believe that I opened up my Bible, I was in a one-year Bible reading plan, and Psalm 82 verses three and four came. Literally, that was what I read. Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. And I was like, you know what I mean? Seriously, just, just blown away. And I'm like, okay. I was ready at three, apparently. Well, apparently I wasn't ready. God's timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. So what else can we learn from Abraham and the dream giver? The next one here is patience and faithfulness are required to see the fulfillment of God's dreams. Patience and faithfulness are required to see the fulfillment of God's dreams. Uh, If you'd waited for 10 years, you'd be a little antsy. All of us would be. We'd be weary. And here's the problem with weariness. Here's the problem, the things that get us in trouble when we're weary is we become vulnerable to the enemy's attacks. Okay? We become vulnerable. So just like what I told you, I was like, Pastor Andy is saying he questions the tithe at times. (laughs) And look, when we become weary, we're vulnerable for the enemy's attacks. Attack. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. This is, this is the enemy. This is what he does to steal, kill, and destroy. These are the things that he wants to do. The disunity and whatnot that you find in your family at times, the enemy is trying to mess things up. He's trying to mess God's plans up. This is what he does. And so when we're weary, just like Abraham and Sarah were weary, it's been 10 years. Like, okay, I'm watching that cattle over there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this, is, this, this was becoming a burden. And so here's the deal. What do we do in the waiting? So we've already declared patience and faithfulness are required to see the fulfillment, the fulfillment of God's dreams. And so um, what do we do in the waiting? We're tempted to, to get angry. Okay, we're tempted to, to sulk. Who, never mind. I was going to say, who's our sulkers here? You know, nobody's like... Oh, yeah, that's me, you know. Um, but you get mad or, or it's time to party, you know. I mean, whatever your response is to create a Band-Aid to numb you from the pain of the reality of where you are because it isn't where you believe God wants you to be and so this is what the world turns to and this is why your pastor is so against drinking because it just numbs you takes away your ability to have good judgment. It's like, oh, let's go make our best decisions now that we've had a few. (laughs) Sorry. Anyhow, no, I'm not. Okay, Psalm Psalm 5.3 says this. Listen to to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly expectantly. Isaiah 64, 4, for since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. In Isaiah 40, 31, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach, okay, never mind. Teach me, Lord, to wait, right? Some of you know it. Okay. So what do we do in the waiting? We're to wait on the Lord and trust him 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Uh, I've read that verse 150 times, and I was walking through something recently, and I read that verse anew, and it was like, God, if I trust you and I seek you, you're going to show me which path to take. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? I mean, God speaks to us where we are. And so this, this waiting, okay, this waiting, this Hebrew word, kava, to wait, to hope, to look eagerly for, to expect, all right, this, this waiting isn't like, give me the remote. I mean, this, this is an active waiting that's going on. This is like the waiter or the server at your restaurant who's constantly looking, constantly expecting something to happen, looking for any cue of any need. This is the waiting that we see here in Scripture. And so we keep swimming. Now, I was being mocked last week for my swimming because I'm thinking finding Nemo, and they're like, look, you swam in, you know, your junior year of high school. Come on, can't you do anything better than that? Anyhow, but the whole idea is like, just keep, keep moving, keep waiting, keep expecting. Be faithful to God in the waiting. Be faithful to God in the waiting. Be faithful. Be faithful in the waiting. You've, you've got to be faithful. God honors faithfulness. Galatians 6, 9, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Don't give up. Continue to be faithful. So here's my question, South County. Are you being faithful in the waiting? Are you being faithful to God in the waiting? This is so important. Don't allow the enemy to get you off course. Stay the course. Stay the course. Stay following Jesus, stay following his word. God's ways are perfect. Psalm 19, 7 says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Reviving the soul. More lessons from Abraham and the dream giver. Here's another one. Regular recalling of the dream is necessary. Regular recalling of the dream is necessary. If you've ever gotten weary from carrying a dream, you're not alone. Because sometimes you're like, man, this is just taking forever. Abraham and Sarah had gotten weary for so many reasons. You know, she wasn't able to have kids, right? I mean, that was, this had been going on throughout their marriage relationship, frustrated over that. The dream began to fade from simply a biological standpoint, right? It began to fade because it was becoming impossible in the natural for this to happen. So when something becomes impossible, you're immediately like, all right, I need to take this back from God. I need to fix this because clearly God is asleep or something. He's, he's, he's not paying attention. Hello, hello, hello. He's not paying attention to me because this biological clock is ticking. So Genesis 18, 15 through 17 gives us a little bit of window into that. It says, then God said to Abraham regarding Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, her name will be Sarah. Both of them mean princess, just in case you're wondering. And I, will be, and I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I become a father at the age of 100, he thought. And how can Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? Sarah had the same response, like, Pfft. And then the angel called her out on it, right? And he's like, you laughed. She says, oh, no, I didn't laugh. (laughs) I didn't laugh. It wasn't me. We've got to continue to recall uh, the dream. Last week, I I gave you some time to begin writing down some of the things that God had put on your heart. 
And I hope you'll continue to spend time there. God, what, what's the dream? And I had someone even asking me this morning, you know, about a dream. Um, you know, I want God to give me a, a dream. And I'm, you know, just keep praying, keep seeking. Scripture says, ask, seek, knock. I, you know, he's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. And so I asked you to be in writing it down, what, what God is, is doing, what he's speaking to you. Um, when God gives us a dream, we need to keep it in front of us. Proverbs 4, 25 through 27 says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Okay, stay the course, South County. So what does this look like? Recalling the dream, put, you know, what does it look like once you have the dream, how do you keep that in front of you? Well, I don't know, maybe it's a scripture verse, okay? I mean, clearly, what I just recited to you in Psalm 82, verses three and four, that is now part of Andy, right? You know, give justice to the poor and the orphan. I mean, th- this, is, this is something, when God brings something together like that, do whatever it takes to keep that in front of you. Is it a picture? Something to regularly recall the vision. Uh, you know what I do on my iPad here? I literally have a picture of the chapel, actually, the prison chapel over there, okay? I have a picture of that to remind me of the dream, to remind me that God has called South County to more, that he has things in store for South County. And so I have, and sometimes I get weary from carrying that, honestly, right? But we keep that in front of us. We keep it in front of us, and uh, we keep pursuing God. And a little side note, there's uh, some of us from the advisor team this week are, are going to go look at a couple properties uh, as well. So pray with us through that uh, as well. But we want to keep that in front of us, keep the dreams in front of us. What does that look like for you? I, I can't answer that completely, but God can. God can give you wisdom on what to do, what to do. Another lesson here, the last one we'll look at is this. Culture doesn't dictate our behavior. This one's so important. Culture doesn't dictate our behavior. God and his promises do. God and his promises do. Uh, What happens when we follow culture instead of God? Be like, let me give you the list. Right? There's a, there's a whole list. Well, let me just say it this way. We add a whole lot of extra drama to our lives. Genesis 16.2, so Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. It's interesting to me how she blames God here. Okay? Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And, and then Abram's like, yeah, that's a good plan. I like that. <laughs> you know, uh, Abram. Slap, slap, slap. Anyhow, and Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. Um, So interestingly enough, from a cultural standpoint, this was not anything new, okay? This was not anything new. Uh, Sarah Sarah giving Hagar to Abraham as a substitute wife was actually a common practice. There was a lot of shame when someone couldn't have children. And so if you had a servant that could carry on your line, so to speak, they would become your kids. But here's the deal. Abraham had already received the promise from God. This was a major distraction, major distraction that caused so much extra drama. We wouldn't have Genesis 16 and a whole lot of other things. In fact, the whole Israeli-Arab conflict right now is, is all because of what we're reading right here. Thank you so much, right? There was probably a lot of pain that Sarah was experiencing, a lot of shame that she was experiencing, and I don't want to ignore that here. I think emotionally it was extremely painful. Um, But then there was this blame game. God's promises aren't coming true because of you, Abram. Because of you, God, they're not coming true. And so all of a sudden there became an option to do something that was not part of God's plan, which always gets us in trouble 
when we get off course. There are consequences for not trusting the Lord and for taking a shortcut. There's consequences to that. Can you think of some in your own life today? Some consequences when you thought, I know better. And that's exactly what happened here. More drama in Abraham and Sarah's life. Blame, jealousy, anger, stress. All these things that were added because they followed culture rather than the promises of God. We have to remember what God has promised and we have to trust him that in his timing, it will come to pass. It's going to come to pass. If God has given you a dream, I'm speaking to you here. As God, if God has given you a dream, just wait on him. Trust him. Don't get sidetracked from things. There's so many consequences that we probably are experiencing even now because of things that we have done, shortcuts that we have taken. And that's why it's so important for us as followers of Jesus Christ to say, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to follow his path. I'm going to stay the course. Ephesians 5, 10 says this, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Expose them. I mentioned earlier the primary job of the enemy is to get us off track, to get us off course. He doesn't want us following the Lord. His whole job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? But the Lord has come to give us life, and life to the fullest, Scripture says. And so the enemy's trying to do whatever he can. If I can cause some disunity here, if I can put a distraction over here, if I can make this look attractive over here, she's a little bit more, well, she's kind of, I don't know, maybe I'll follow this girl over here. It, it goes in so many different ways. There are distractions that take our eyes off of God and his path today. And when we follow the course of our culture today, we can get into the same circumstances where we cause so much extra drama for our life. When we, when we think, oh, culture says it's okay if we lie. Culture says it's okay if we cheat. It's, it's all right to step on a few people to get to the top. Isn't that right, South County? <laughs> wink, wink. It's okay to sleep who, with who you want to sleep with. It's okay not to be married and explore. Not according to God's word. It's okay to gossip. It's okay to follow homosexual tendencies. It's okay to plagiarize. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Isn't it right? Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but it's so true. When we follow culture, we get ourselves in a whole, let's just say deep kimchi. We get ourselves a lot of problem, give ourselves a lot of problems, create a whole lot of extra drama. And, and, I, and listen, here's the deal. I've created extra drama for my, in my life because of this issue, and I know you have too. I know you have too. And so what do we do? We repent from it. We say, God, I'm following you. I'm getting back on your path. I know that you have what's best for me. I know that your timing is perfect for me. God, I'm going to follow you. I choose to follow you. I can't do, I can't, I can't change the past. But God, I'm following you, and you're the dream giver, and you're the one that can, can uh, bring reconciliation, and you can restore, because that's what our God does. That's what he does. He restores. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful that he restores? Aren't you grateful that he brings reconciliation? There are so many things in my own life that going through the army, I'm like, oh, God, thank you that, that people didn't have cameras in their hand all the time. You know, they're like Polaroids that I can burn. You know what I'm saying? God, thank you. Thank you that you restore. So my question for you, South County, today, and you've been so good sticking with me today. Are you staying the course? Are you staying the course? 
There are so many distractions. And we can be like Christians who have ADHD, you know, being pulled to different things all the time, you know. Stay the course. Continue to follow the Lord. Continue to trust him. Continue to remember that he knows the beginning from the end. Continue to follow his dream for your life. And you'll never be disappointed as you follow him. And so today, um, just really in closing, um, my question is, have you become weary carrying the dream today? I told you already that weariness causes a lot of vulnerability. When When you're tired, you know, you've heard the whole halt you know, so if I'm being tempted, you know, I think of halt, right? Which means what? Yeah, you're like, hungry, angry, no, I was talking about stop. But anyhow, but yeah, yeah, stop. Stop what you're doing because if you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you're more vulnerable for the enemy's attacks. Have a Snickers bar, you know, take a nap, you know. But, but seriously, you're more vulnerable we have to recognize that. So have you become weary today? You're pursuing the Lord and you become, you become weary. You, you have a dream. You have, you have a dream, but you have some brokenness too. And, and you become weary in that. And I'm telling you, the Lord knows where you are. And as you choose to trust him, as you continue to be uh, faithful, to him, continue to obey his word. He's going to bring blessing to your life. That's what he does. This is what happens when we follow the Lord. Do you understand that, South County? Do you understand? When we follow God, when we follow him, we've already declared it, he brings blessing to our life. But we have to choose. We have to choose. God, am I gonna follow myself or am I gonna follow you? And it's always in our, in our court, like what? Would we choose? We're never alone. Uh, it's interesting that Hagar was in this vulnerable place. She was running from Sarai, which we know obviously was Sarah. She was in this vulnerable place. And it's interesting to me that the Lord even pursued her, right? The Lord pursued her as well, and um, he pursues us too. And I love Hagar when she says, you are the God who sees me. Do you recognize today that he is the God who sees you? Do you recognize he is the God who sees you? He sees right where you are today. He knows what's going through your mind right now. He knows. Genesis 16, she said, you are the God who sees me. Have I truly seen the one who sees me. And I'm telling you today, you have seen the one. It's our God. The Holy Spirit, he's here. He knows what you're walking through. He knows the things that um, have been put on your heart by God. And so now we continue to look to the Lord to give us what we need, to follow him and accomplish every dream, every dream that he has placed on our hearts. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? The worship team is going to lead us. Um, something that I thought of as I was looking at this particular thing is a hymn. Um, because there's a hymn, Come Thou Fount, that says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Maybe you've felt that a little bit, living and breathing in this life, but the Lord is with you, and he's going to help you stay the course. He's going to help you stay the course. Heavenly Father, thank you so much today for your word. Lord, even in this moment, God, if we are in a place where we recognize we've been vulnerable, if we've gotten distracted from your path, God, today, we declare that we are going to follow you. So if that's you today, you know that you've gotten off track. You've not been following the Lord, but you are going to choose to follow him today. You just tell the Lord right where you are. Say, Jesus, I choose to follow you. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm going to stay on your path. 
I return to you. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be my God.